All right, everyone. So welcome back to CIS 125 week two. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder at home, um, the class is being recorded for playback. So as such, you are not required to turn on your webcam or microphone if you don't wish. So welcome back, everyone. We're on week two. We're going to get more hands on. We've got uh, two assignments this week that I'll cover. We'll also talk about the uh, concepts of just learning more of this software, getting good at the software so it can actually do what you want it to, to do. So I'm gonna do just a quick overview of the module as people come in today. Um, just briefly, you should look at it on your own. And uh, this, is, this is available usually at the very latest. It's available, you know, Monday morning, you know, morning, morning, as in midnight. Monday midnight, so you should get it then. Oftentimes, though, I might have it also available like Sunday evening. Um, I did have this available since last night, like 8 p.m. or something. So the sooner you see this stuff, the better. Um, I will go over it a little bit in class, but as soon as it's available, you should look at it too. Briefly here, just read all of that there on your own. Um, there's a part here about flipped classroom, which is that, yes, because the class goes quickly, you do want to look at the material as soon as you can. And if there's anything that says, you know, read this or check this out before class, you should do that. And I'll note which items are those and you'll get used to that because you do want to do some work before class if you can. Uh, you'll do a lot better if you do get that working. Uh, so ladies, 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 uh, for the moment, let's just follow along here. For the moment, and then we'll figure that out a little bit later. So the uh, objectives, well, we've got two assignments. One is going to be to practice using Adobe Animate by tracing characters, and one is going to be about creating original characters. So two assignments this week turned in in two different ways, um, both very creative types of assignments. Now, we will start having um, on um, Wednesdays, uh, Mondays might not be very long, but on Wednesdays, we'll start having some open lab. I've got another class that I teach on Monday, so I, I might not be able to stay. And that'll be depending on various factors on Monday. But on Wednesday after class, after uh, 2.30, I am planning to have about an hour. So uh, 2.30 to 3.30 on Wednesdays, that'll be our open lab days, possibly Mondays, but we'll we'll figure that out. So just be aware of that. And I'll set up an official uh, announcement on that once it's solidified. So if you need to stay to do work, definitely Wednesdays, probably Mondays, we will see. As usual, the live session is here. All the material about what we're going to talk about will be listed there. Actually, there's a little mistake there. Let me remove that. So dates are not right. Okay, so actually, I'll just do it the easy way. And I will say that is not available for the moment. There's a few things that need to be edited there. So don't worry about that one. I will edit it and reactivate it soon. Um, under the resources. So um, here's what I'm saying about the material will be available Monday morning. And if you get to it early, great. If you don't, uh, I will be looking at it in class, but you should look at the material before class. Uh, some things will be noted about, please check this out before class. So I noted the uh, table of contents of the user guide last time. I put it here as a nice link. Um, so you do want to check out the visual glossary on your own and these animate tutorials on your own. Here's a few videos that are about three to six minutes long. Check those out on your own at some point. Browse the whole visual glossary kind of chapter, and um, you'll be up to date on that. Uh, for this week, we've got a few things, and um, I'll put these, uh, actually, uh, Angie, if you could, well, actually, you might not have access also, so I'll do it in a moment, but yeah, exactly, so I'll put it there in a moment. Um, the um, This week, we've got a uh, couple of files here that I'm going to give you, which is going to be part of the assignment. One of the assignments is going to be to practice using Animate by tracing uh, drawings that already are, exist from someone else, uh, and then also uh, model sheet work. There's also a video here, um, which that doesn't go there, that goes over here. But here's a little video from Gindy Tartakovsky, this famous um, cartoonist. Anyone remember Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack, those sorts of cartoons? So um, Hotel Transylvania, 
So he's been involved in those uh, movies and shows, and he's got a cool little video there about creating characters. There's also, uh, so note where I write optional, notice where I, I write, you know, do this. So you should be uh, accessing this material. And then the model sheet. So this will be part of the second assignment this week. I'll get back to this in a moment. But the point is that Monday morning, the uh, module will be available so that you can start to look at it to prepare what you need to do that particular week. So there is already the preview here of what the two assignments are. And the way I do my classes is I, I kind of give you a preview of what the assignment is, and then we'll do the lecture so that it makes more sense. And then I'll come back to the assignment, mention it one more time, so you kind of get it in different ways. Here's what's the homework for this week. So there's two homeworks this week, 10 points each. The first one, again, we haven't done this. I'm gonna show you how to do all of this, but in general, you're gonna create a project folder, a project file, set up a few settings, save it. Now here, this always happens. When I write last name, obviously you write your last name. Don't write literally last name, write literally your last name, not the word last name, right? You're gonna write your last name so I know who to give the A plus to. So you're gonna create a file, some layers. You're gonna download some example files import them into the project and use them as a guide to trace. Of course, I'm gonna show you how to do all of this in a moment. This is just a preview of the assignment. And using any of the drawing tools, any way you wanna practice with Adobe Animate, you're gonna trace these images. I'll show you the images in a moment. And you're gonna color them. So you can keep them with flat colors. You can add cell shading style. I'll explain what that is in a moment. You can add elaborate gradients. I'll explain that in a moment. And so basically one of these assignments this week is you're gonna practice, you're gonna trace someone else's image so that you get comfortable with the pen, you get comfortable with Adobe Animate, you get comfortable with some of the basic usage of Adobe Animate. You're gonna export it as a PNG or ping file. You're gonna upload your FLA and ping files, 10 points, make sure you do the requirements. I'm not grading on artistry, but I am grading on effort. If I'm giving you a drawing, I don't expect a stick figure. You will be tracing something that is doable for you to trace. And so technical requirements is what you'll be graded on, effort and the like. Ten points due on Sunday. Nine points, up to nine points if it's late. But don't fall behind. Class goes by very fast. The breakdown of points. So this is one of the assignments. It'll make more sense once I do the main lecture. The other assignment, um, this first assignment is submitted only to me, only I will see it, I will grade you. The other assignment is a public assignment, similar to last week's icebreaker introduction assignment thing where everyone saw each other's work and I haven't finished grading that yet. It was due last night, I'm still working on grading. So um, grades for that are coming. But that type of a public assignment, we might have that type, versus an assignment that you only turn into me. And obviously I'll differentiate the two. And this week we've got one of each. So the public assignment, the other week two assignment, your original character. This first assignment is based on one of the ones I give you. You have to do it on one of the ones I give you. Don't go off and wander off and go to the internet and find some other drawing that you wanna trace. That's not the assignment. And this is not be being, me being mean. It's just that I'm trying to simulate in the real world, if your boss asks you to do X, Y, Z, and instead you do A, B, C, why would the boss be happy? You didn't do what the boss wanted. And who cares about getting a bad grade in a class? What's a bad grade in a job? You get fired. So if I ask you to do something in these assignments, make sure you do it. Because in the real world, in the job world, uh, the requirements that are there are the requirements. So you need to do them. So the other assignment, original character. I previewed it last week where I showed you examples of people's model sheets where they drew a character in a variety of ways. So the uh, assignment is gonna focus on that. You're gonna create a project folder. You're gonna create a specific file with specific dimensions and the like. You're gonna name it a specific thing. And based on the six types of model sheets that I will demonstrate in a moment, 
you will create some of these. Now you must create the turnaround model sheet and then two of any other type. These are the six possible types. So not three turnarounds. You're gonna create one required turnaround and then two optional or two of any of these other types. You're gonna export these as PNGs, upload them to Canvas. Uh, there's a reply here like we did last week's work. You're gonna reply. Uh, tell us a little bit about the character. Obviously you have a backstory of the character. It doesn't need to be fully defined at the moment. The main goal of this week is the drawing, but the backstory will also be part of the assignment. And then upload your three ping files here to Canvas. Now for full credit, it's two parts, your initial post and then replies. So reply to at least two classmates and say one positive thing you like about their character, their drawing, their technique, whatever, their story, et cetera. And then one constructive criticism, one, one, one way to help them. And remember, this is not the anonymous internet where you will never see the person on the other side of the screen. The, other, the person on the other side of the screen is sitting next to you. So you want to be respectful. You want to be honest and such, but you want to be respectful of their work and their effort. And if you reply and simply like, oh, that character's trash, that's not acceptable. You want to reply, I don't think this character works very well because, you know, three legs, that doesn't make sense. Well, you know, tell them something in a way that might be constructive criticism to improve. So you're going to say one thing you like and one thing that may be improved um, respectfully. Notice I have the netiquette guides and so forth, so always adhere to those. And this second assignment is based on the grading where you upload the files. It One's got to be the turnaround, uh, then the other ones. You uh, post here on Canvas to upload, to uh, submit it, and then you do replies. So um, two assignments this week, which after the lecture will make more sense on how to complete these assignments, uh, but these are the two. Then lastly, for next week, well, at the end of the week, here's the things we covered. And then for next week, we're gonna work on backgrounds and such. So more working with the software, more working with the tablets, more getting used to the software, creating your original content. So again, I'll make that live session live in a moment. I've got to edit a few things. But what I do at the beginning of the class is a quick preview of things. Then we'll do the main lecture. And the material is also there available um, Monday morning that you should check out on your own. So let me pause here for general questions and we'll move on. Uh, any any questions, general questions at the moment? Yes. No. Short answer, no. Long answer, no. This class is Adobe Animate. And now this is to simulate, let's say you get in a job where everyone is hired to do something and everyone's using a certain software. If everyone's doing that in that job and you want to do it a different way, that might be a conflict in the job work, in the job place. So uh, it'll be a learning experience and uh, we're doing animate in this class. Yes, Adobe Animate can create all types of files and we will see in the lecture. So, yes. I can't use my phone to get A, they start, but I never get anything. Okay, uh, during a little bit more of the open lab time, we can look at what's going on with that. Um, but for the moment, we can use the software in here. Is anyone else also having any trouble with the software if you're doing it at home or the hardware? Oh, okay. Uh, definitely, that's why we've got the, the, the time uh, in the labs. Uh, but yeah, we can also talk about that a little bit later. Uh, what about at home? Anyone having any trouble at home, managing things at home? Okay. So if you came in a little bit late, if people want to borrow a one of my tablets in here, I can give out a tablet and I can give out headphones. Anyone need a tablet or headphones?
So we will do one more time the uh, attendance this way. Um, the, so um, as you will just put your name here legibly. For using these tablets, what you want to do is there's a plug on the side. There's a side, there's a plug on the side of your monitor, and then you want to plug in the uh, the small end on the side, USB on the monitor. Now, there is a way to turn it left-handed, right-handed, but for the moment, um, make sure these little controls are on the left side. In a moment, we'll figure out um, left-handed, right-handed, because we have to change a little setting. But for the moment, you can put it on the left and then plug it all in and make sure that if you move your pen around it, it does follow you on the screen. So um, I'm going to start Adobe Animate. You should start Adobe Animate as well. Log in on that. All right, so because these things have deep freeze, like I said, it's gonna forget all your settings. So if you previously said, yes, I am new to animate or no, it'll keep asking you every time. It's just deep freeze our software. So just uh, say yes, or sorry, you click uh, no, just to get that out of the way. Starts up just to kind of get a project to work with, select the full HD preset. I want to create a file to work with. I want to get used to a, a little bit of a workflow. Um, these projects uh, can be as simple as drawings or as complex as full interactivity. Uh, so for the moment, uh, let's go to file save, save as. Just create a file, click Save As, and you do want to organize yourself in folders. Uh, so once again, like last time, if you want to take this work with you, uh, you need a USB drive or you can upload it to your Google Drive that you get free from the college. For the moment, I'm going to put mine on the desktop. This will also be some work that you, if you don't want to take it with you, that, that'll be fine. This will be practice. But on the desktop, I want to create a folder. Uh, we can call it Today's Date. Today, the 12th, making a new folder on the desktop. And then this file, you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it practice one or something. Save that. Oh, yeah. Like this. 
And then this one is this way. <laughs> okay. okay, I can figure it out. <laughs> so um, let's just save this file. And we want to get used to um, layers, zooming in, zooming out, panels, working with our interface, uh, all of these various details of uh, the complexity of the app. For example, maybe sometimes I want to hide all my panels. Maybe I don't need all of those things in my way. I just need the drawing surface. So the way you can do this, for example, if you press F4 on the keyboard, so try that for a moment. On the keyboard, press F4. Notice it'll hide all your panels quickly. Sometimes that's a lot better than having everything in the way. So F4 to clear your panels for the moment. Um, last time we talked about, you know, zooming in and zooming out. Anyone remember the various ways we talked about zooming in and zooming out? Somehow, mentally? Hmm? Control minus, control plus. So practice that. Control on the keyboard, plus minus, et cetera. There's also control one, for example. Uh, there's also the icons on the corner over here. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in here. Going to get the brush tool. And here's where the, um, so with the brush tool, here's the great thing about these tablets that they are, uh, you know, way better than, than a mouse because it's actually going to follow your hands. And what's really nice is that it's also got pressure sensitivity. That if you press a little harder, you get a thicker line. If you press a little softer, you get a thinner line. This is one of the big reasons why we would want to use these tablets because that's like realism. Question? Okay. So here I'm going to get used to using this. Now, these buttons on the side here, we can also go to the settings and map them and have them do different things. Uh, for example, I can use this as a sort of a scroll around. Uh, if you notice, you've got a little circular indentation, that's touch sensitive, and you can kind of use it to scroll around up and down. I believe if you hold down control and scroll, it goes, oh, but there's also, there's also zoom in and out right there. So I'm holding control on the keyboard, and on the device here, I'm scrolling around the little scroll wheel. Let's see what else? Uh, if you press that button there, the, bu the, the button in the center, that pops up to show you, you've also got a way to control different things. For example, here, I'm pressing the button in the center and the little pop-up says, okay, if you're on that first um, light that is affecting your auto scroll, so you, you scroll around, cool. You press it again, that's cycling through layers. I don't have any layers at the moment. Press it again, that's my brush size. Press it again, that's rotate the canvas. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I draw, it's a lot easier for me to kind of rotate my paper around as I draw. You can rotate the paper around as well on canvas, or sorry, on animate by um, using that rotate. And if you also go to the brush, it'll give you different size brushes. See how my um, see how my brush size over here is changing. If you press that center button, select the brush. It's going to be the one in the corner there. Now you can easily rotate it around to find the right brush size. So for me, I'm just kind of scribbling around and maybe I just want to erase things. Uh, a quick way to do this is you can press control A on the keyboard that selects everything and then you can delete. I'm kind of getting used to this. Compared to the mouse, mouse has a, a relative movement. 
whereas these pen tablets have an absolute movement. And what that means is on the mouse, when I get to the edge of my table or whatever, I have to lift up the mouse and then continue moving it and then lift it and continue moving. It's relative. Absolute here is that on the top right corner, I put my mouse, my pen on the top right corner, it's at the top right corner of the screen. I put my pen at the bottom left corner, it's at the bottom left. I put it in the center, it's at the center. What you see on the, on the tablet is absolute what you see on the screen compared to the mouse where you have to move it and lift your mouse and so forth. Here it's absolute. So that's a little getting used to maybe. But once you get used to both of them, you'll be able to do in here, like, yeah, click the file menu on top, go to hello or help, I mean, and do this and that. So it's all an absolute movement here, follows you absolutely. All of these buttons can also be set to do different things, touch on, touch off. Well, what's that doing? This very first button, touch on, touch off. Now my finger can be the mouse. Touch off, and it's not my finger, but the pen. Your mouse gently, if you put, if you just don't touch, if, don't press it, but if you put your finger on it, it should pop up to also give you the various, what do all these buttons do? You just put your mouse, put your finger on it gently and it'll tell you, yeah, this is what all of these things do. There's settings in there that you can eventually go to and tweak all of these pen settings. These things are advanced. I don't remember how much they cost, but probably, I don't know, $300 or something when we got them. So this is like one of the high-end ones. And this is a high-end one maybe five years ago. So now that same amount gets you an even better one. Some of the newest ones have the screen actually on the tablet. Because right now I have to get used to, okay, my hand is down here, my screen's over here. But some of the newest ones, the screen is on the tablet. So you're looking at it right here and drawing right here. And uh, these have Bluetooth too, but we don't really have them set up for Bluetooth. We're tied with a cable. But yeah, these things are cool. There's a bunch of different manufacturers. These are Wacom tablets. There's um, Huon and a bunch of other ones out there. So if you can get one, that's great. Uh, if not, we've got them in the class for you, but um, we can see how much more intuitive they are. Or we do very much. There's something to be very aware of and be very careful of down here. I've, let's do this. I've got my brush, my classic brush. And then at the bottom, at the very end, there should be of icons at the bottom. And there's one here, use pressure, which is currently active. There's deactive. There's one here, use tilt, which is currently deactivated. You activate it. Now it'll also detect if your, if your pen is vertical versus sideways a bit. Different brushes will show it in different ways. If you don't want pressure sensitivity, you can turn that off. The line will just be one size. Turning it on now will give you the different sizes. This drawing object button here is going to be the worst thing. You're going to hate it until you realize what it's used for and such. And the default, most likely, is you do not want the object drawing on, see there it is on right there, there is off, because you want it off. Because let's say I draw a cool square and I wanna fill in the color green. Okay, that worked, no problem. But if instead you've got the uh, object drawing on, draw a square, a square, and then I'm going to get the paint bucket and fill it in with a color. Again, that's because this on the left is a complete shape. It's hard to see on my projector, but with the selection tool, and if I click on the edge of the, the line, it's a complete shape, whereas this one, it's one piece and one piece and one piece. 
So because it's not all one piece, I can't fill in the color like I can here. This mode has purposes usually. However, you don't want it. It's very easy to turn on. Either you turn it on or you accidentally press the J key on the keyboard, right? Everything's got a keyboard shortcut. You might have accidentally hit the J key and now you're drawing something, but it's not actually a complete shape. And therefore you can't fill in the color. So if you ever accidentally, you, you're working all of this time and then you um, did it in the wrong mode, one way to kind of see what mode you were on is if you click on the keyframe, key, clicking on the keyframe is a quick way to select everything. And notice when I click on my keyframe, these are showing up. A little body pattern that shows you it's a basic. Okay. It's around each piece. It's telling me that's not a basic drawing. That's not a basic shape. It's going to give me problems later. The selection tool, I can also click. This is again because of this type of software, clicking once does something, clicking and dragging does something else. So you have to get used to this, that I wanna move this thing. If I, if I click and drag it, I might not actually move the thing. It, it's often better to click to select, and I've moved over to the selection tool. It's often better to click on the thing to select it, then you can interact with it. Click, then interact. Instead of just clicking and dragging, because oftentimes you might just grab the edge of it. This, and grab the wrong part. Same thing here, I wanna move this. And unless you, unless you pay attention to your little mouse here, your pointer, you might not do what you think you're doing. And so notice here, I drew a square a little while ago and the square has this uh, outline part of it, the inside part. So Animate works with the concepts of fills and strokes. What's in the inside, what's on the outside. The fill is the color on the inside. It could be a flat color, a gradient color, et cetera. On the outside is the stroke. And here I thought I was drawing a, an actual closed shape, but it's not. The good news is though, you can convert between the two. So for example, on this one, I select everything, modify menu, break apart, It's very subtle. If you see that, let me show that again. A moment to go here, it was not a shape I want to work with. I selected it all and then I did modify break apart, control B, keyboard shortcut, control B. Now it becomes a basic shape. Now, if I want to fill in the color, great, fill in the color. All of that is the, is the annoyance of, whoops, I was drawing in the wrong mode, object, drawing. It has a purpose. I hardly ever find it very useful. It's accidentally easy to turn on. Make sure it's off. You should change color like a bright red. It's highlighted. It's highlighted, selected. I guess you can kind of tell this is on, but uh, you want that mode off. And if you accidentally draw in the wrong way, you can always take that and change it to modify break apart. So let's say I'm trying to draw character. 
might be familiar, might be a bad interpretation of it, but let's say I've got a character that I drew. Well, sometimes the um, drawings that I, that I do aren't as smooth as I'd like. The cool thing is that Animate can help you either smoothen or straighten your lines. So let's say, you know, draw something, try that, draw something, um, select it. So select tool, your drawing. Oops, I drew it in the wrong mode. But see, I thought I turned it off. Okay, do it. I drew it in the wrong mode. Yeah, so I drew it in the wrong mode. Okay, no problem. Modify break apart. Not that. Okay. So anyway, um, you, if you click once on the line that you drew, depending how you drew it, you might have drawn it properly and that the lines are connected. Maybe there was a part that the line wasn't connected. A double click will often let you select your line. A lot easier. Once I select my lines, we've got these options at the bottom here that appeared. So again, this is very complex software because even selecting and going to different tools give you different options. So on the bottom here, we have this smoothen. We have this straighten. Now this is me switching over to my selection tool. I'm gonna to select my line that I drew with the brush tool, and then I can click here, smoothen and straighten. Let me show straighten for a moment. If I click straighten, it's gonna kind of re redo the calculation of the drawing to a straighter line. It might not always be exactly what you want, but notice what's happening is the lines are getting a lot straighter. I really wanted that straight back of the head there. So by clicking that straighten, it straightened it now. I selected everything, so everything is getting straightened maybe too much. So obviously I can undo the undoing. So maybe what if I wanted to select this part of the drawing, selection tool, make a little selection box, click straighten there. So maybe only that piece gets straightened. Let me undo. I've got this selection tool lasso here. Okay, let me get more precise. I'm going to with the lasso tool. Selection here. Only that line, only that piece of the line. Do I want to straighten? Nice. Maybe only this part over here. I want to straighten. Okay. We have the opposite as well. Maybe I've got some, um, some, I'm trying to create a nice circle. I can do the opposite, smoothen. A little bit. And then I can further go in and refine it. I can go into my drawing and further just refine every piece of it. This is again a vector based drawing tool. It's basically mathematical equations in the equation of a line or a circle or a Bart Simpson head is a certain calculation that, you know, I don't need to care about math, but behind the scenes, it's still fully editable. Maybe I further want to go in here and move this line there. Maybe I want that sort of thick, thick line here. At the moment, it's kind of jumping into place that I don't like. It's kind of sort of snapping to place. So you can turn that off. Uh, snap, oh, here it is. So. Um, selection tool, this has various buttons. There's this little magnet snap. You might want it, you might not. It's kind of annoying that they've got a very complicated interface, but they also don't, sometimes they're not consistent because 
icons down here a moment ago to help me in my drawing and such. Oh, some of those icons are over here in this properties panel. So you've got to pay attention to properties of your drawings. You got to pay attention to extra options of the tool or to the interface. So maybe if you're moving things around and the lines are not snapping properly or they're snapping too much, you might turn off that magnet. Now here also, like, what's, what's the obvious that it's on and off? This is funny. If you click it to select it, okay, it's blue, it's highlighted. But if I click somewhere else, the blue goes away. So that is very subtle, but that is on. These two are off. These two are on. And now it's off, but it's highlighted. But if I click elsewhere, then it goes away. So kind of a very weird little thing on that interface. And the point of it is that if I turn off snap object, now when I kind of manipulate my lines, they're going to go exactly where I want. With snap on, it may be useful that it kind of guides you and snaps into places. Sometimes you need a very precise movement, and sometimes you need freehand. I could have like my first pass of the drawing, and then I can further go in and uh, refine it. Maybe this part of the lip is too thick, so I can grab this edge and pull it down here somewhere. You have a regular old pencil in your drawing. Often when you flip the pencil over, what do you have? You know, eraser in real life. You have an eraser here too. Try to flip your Wacom pen over and uh, oh, I got an eraser. And this is the funny thing, after you let go of the mouse or the pen is when it does the erasure part. That's kind of weird. You've also got the eraser tool itself over here, E for eraser, do erasings. If you flip it over, you get the quick eraser, but I kind of don't like that I can't see how big the eraser is. If you switch over to the eraser tool, then you can properly erase. All right, so for the moment, let's you just practice a little bit with the uh, pen and so forth. Just play with it a little bit. At 12.55, then we'll take our first break. And then after the break, show you some more things. But for the moment, just practice a little bit. Create a file, draw, change colors, try to fill in colors. Just practice with it. Call me over or the assistants if you need any help, but just Practice with it a little bit, a couple minutes, and then move on and on.
but here's a quick tip. If you want to, if you want to resize your uh, brushes quickly uh, on the keyboard, there's also next to the letter P in between backslash, there's brackets. If you press those brackets, left bracket, right bracket, do you see how the size of my brush is also changing? So maybe that's a way as well. Uh, I can quickly change my brush sizes. That also counts for the eraser. But on the keyboard, brackets. Now, there's a lot of shortcuts again. And remember, in Canvas, we put a link in there for all of the various shortcuts. You're not going to memorize them right away. It's going to take time. You're not going to need to know every one of them. But the more of these that you learn, the better. Because, you know, B to jump to the brush, L to jump to the lasso, um, F4, remember that one earlier, F4 to close all your panels. Maybe once you've selected your colors and such, you just want to get to the drawing. So F4 closes all panels quickly. Control 1 fills up my screen. So lots of shortcuts. Is that inside the board cycle? All right. The screenshot of all the, uh, the shortcuts. All right. So thank you for that. So remember, everyone, in the desktop on the data files, desktop folder, web design folder, our class CIS 125. In there, we've got link to the shortcuts. We've got a graphic version of it, as well as other useful links. right here. Memorize these all. There will be a quiz in five minutes. I'm just kidding. So um, you just want to look at them as time goes on. And again, that's in the web, that's in the data files on the desktop, and then web design. But the, the one for the web page is useful because you can hit each class on the keyboard and search for a specific one mm, that you, can. you might want. So if you open the link version, it opens in the web browser, and then in the web browser, control F, and then find, let's say, uh, fill, and there it's fill. So, yep, you can get it from the web too. Sure, that's, but most people just memorize their favorite ones. Yes. One you could you used to be able to tab as well to hide the panels. That's what you do in Photoshop. But F4 here, and then the various zooms, Control One, Control Two, Control Zero. And I know, and I think like the preferences, it's possible to add create your own keyboard shortcuts. So if you don't like a particular one, you can just change it. Yeah, definitely. Everything's editable. So that's a good point for everyone. You can always go to the edit keyboard shortcuts. You can set your own keyboard shortcuts. So if you don't like B for brush, you can go there and change it to something else. Although something might conflict with something else. So uh, just check what they have there. Right, so uh, let's take our first break. It's break until 1.10 when we come back. Um, I'll talk about importing a graphic uh, to, tr to set yourself up for tracing, then exporting for PNG, et cetera. So take a break if you'd like to keep working, that's fine. Take a break outside if you'd like, grab a snack, hydrate, et cetera. Bathrooms are out there and uh, we'll be back at one.
All right, everyone, let's go on. So for this uh, first assignment to get used to the software, uh, one of the assignments is about tracing. So uh, I need to set up something here, actually. So on Canvas, I have a link, I have a file there for you, but I'm also going to give you the file right here in class. Just a moment. Let's see, downloads. So in Canvas, I've got a zip file. I've got a zip file for you, which I'll give you here in class. Let's let's do this for a moment. Uh, minimize everything. Uh, oh, minimize your windows and such to go to the desktop. And you're going to copy. Don't don't just drag it or open it or whatever. You're going to copy. So go to the desktop. Open up the uh, data files folder. Double click that on the desktop. Double click the uh, web design folder. Our, 
our class folder. And now here you're gonna write, you see week, week two begin, right click and copy. Where's copy at the top, copy. So you're gonna copy that folder. Don't just open it, don't just work inside of it. This is connected to everyone. So you wanna copy for yourself. So right click, copy, begin. And then on your desktop, on an empty spot there on the desktop, right click, paste. Which I guess is that first icon there. So copy and paste it to the desktop. Right click, copy, right click, paste. This file is on Canvas at home as well. That is found over at a couple of places. One in the week two resources. I have it listed there, week two begin. And it's also connected to the homework, tracing characters. So it's listed right there. So I've got it for you here in person and it's also on Canvas. So make sure you copy that week two folder. And then when you look inside of it, you've got here 11 possible drawings for you to do the homework on. Some of them might be familiar, some of them not. But if you click on the top, you can also see them over here, view, large icons. So we have all of these graphics and you're gonna pick one of these as your tracing image that you're gonna draw your own version. Let me step you through, okay, well, how do I get some picture into animate so that then I could trace on it? So you need a copy of that folder, number one. And yes, for the assignment, it's gotta be one of these 11, any one of these. And uh, in animate, what we need to do is get it into our project. So using folder, uh, using layers is uh, very important. Separate your items into different layers. I talked about that briefly next, last time. I will continue to talk about it. We need to get used to using layers. So on the uh, layers, the timeline, we've got layers. And the little plus makes you a layer. So make a layer and lock the other layer. I've, I've got two because I was playing with some other drawings. But you want to click lock. Lock icon and also the little eye icon just to hide any other layers you might've been using. And I've got a new layer there. You're on that new layer. As per the assignment, it will need a specific name, but you can check that later. But on that layer, file menu, import to stage. So importing will let us take just about any type of external file and put it into animate. Um, a graphic in a variety of formats, an audio file, a video file, animate can work with everything. So file import to stage, it's got a keyboard shortcut, control R, I guess R4. I really want to import it onto the stage. That's how you can remember it. So import to stage. Find your file on the desktop and then select it and put it there. Your layers, just so that you can keep track of it all. Right, so pick any of the drawings you like. I'm just gonna go with the first one. They're kind of there in an order, a little bit of, of complexity. Uh, this very first one here is relatively uh, simple. Then we've got more and more and more. And then we get to this last one over here and it's got lots of lines. That's you know pencil drawing with shading and such, but way more lines and complexity perhaps. 
So any one of those that you like, I'm just going to open the first one. Zero one Hernandez gets added to my stage. Now, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, well, my picture is a little bit larger than my actual stage. My stage where my drawings exist and my animations exist and my backgrounds exist, that's the stage. And this picture is a little bit large. So I can either resize, resize the stage to fit the drawing, or most likely you're going to resize the drawing to fit the stage. There's several ways to do this. So notice on your tools, you've got a selection tool and you've got a free transform tool. So clicking free transform, then clicking on the picture will let you grab the corners so that you can resize it so that it fits within the size of your canvas. Now, whoops, I'm resizing it and, and it's shrinking and deforming in not the right proportions. Well, maybe before you resize it, if you hold shift on the keyboard and grab a corner, then now when you resize it, it'll stay in proportion. If you don't hold shift, you might make it too tall, too thin and whatever. But if you hold shift while you grab a corner, it stay in proportion. So whatever size you want it to be to fit on the stage, be able to somewhere modify, somewhere transform. If you want to transform it exactly the right dimensions, it's got to be exactly 92%. There is a way to mathematically do it. For the moment, we can just do it freehand. Of course, we've got to think in three dimensions. You've got these layers and its properties. The three dimensions, but you've got to think in multiple ways. What layer am I working on? What frame am I working on? What object am I working with? That's something to get used to as a beginner, just a lot to deal with. So your other layers, you should have locked them and click the little eye to hide them so you can only focus on this image. image is going to be my tracing image. And then on top of that, I will make a new layer and draw on it. But before that, um, you want to right click the layer where your tracing image is at. Right click it. You have a bunch of options. Select properties. Properties. You can put your name there if you want. The name of the file. You can call it you know, tracing or tracer or call it something that you'd like whatever you'd like. Well, there's also the spot here to lock it. That's convenient. There's a spot here to make it less visible, completely invisible. And there's also make it a normal item, make it a mask, et cetera. But what you want is you want to make it a guide. You want to lock it, give it some name, lock it, turn it into a guide. If you want to, I would recommend it. But if you want to set it to opacity 50, you can also set that to 20% or 10% or whatever. So there's all of these options here to do with layers, especially when you're using them as a starting point for tracing. You don't want the full color, completely, completely visible image. You want like a faded out version of the image. You want it locked so that you're not accidentally drawing on the wrong image and so forth. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Call it something, lock it, change opacity, change it to a guide. If you don't do anything else, make sure you do the guide. That's very important. Heights and colors and other stuff. So click OK. After that is there, now it's faded out a little bit. Notice the icon also changes over here to show you it's a different type of layer compared to a normal layer. It's also been faded out with some transparency. And so obviously, we're not going to draw on this layer. This is just our starting point. We need a new layer. So now we're going to trace it. So I would recommend, we have a bunch of drawing tools, but I would recommend the classic brush. 
We have these other brushes you can play with as well, fluid brush. We've got um, lines. Now here's a very complex way to do this. You can use line, make straight lines. make straight lines and then those lines you can bend them push them and pull them I'll, I'll show that technique in a moment it's very advanced but i'll show it in a moment um probably as a beginner you want to use the the brush tool and you could practice with the mouse as well just kind of to practice with it what i would recommend is with your drawings don't use the black line use another line color, any other color. Myself, I, I pick a red color just because it's gonna be very obviously different than what my uh, original drawing is. And you might say, well, I, I want a black line. My, my end result, I want it to be a black line. Yeah, no problem. This is a vector-based drawing app you can change the color when you're done with it. For example, let's say I'm done with it. I'm gonna hide that layer. What I can do is I can select all the lines at once. You can select everything, control A, you can press the, you can click the layer. And when everything is selected, well, you just go in and say, okay, that color now is green, or that color now is black or dark gray. So I would recommend drawing it in red or green or blue or some other color besides black. And then after the fact, you can infinitely then change these line colors to anything else. But the point of not selecting black now is you're going to get confused. Even if it's faded out, you're going to be tracing black on top of a black line and you might not see details. If you're drawing with a red line, obviously red or yellow will be very different than what's there. It'll be easier to, to see what you're doing. There's the part also where maybe zooming in, right? Control plus, control minus, et cetera. See, I'm just going to use the plain old mouse for the moment. It's not going to be the perfect lines that I get out of a pen tablet. And I'm not going to be grading. I'm not going to be zooming in and grading that, oh, yeah, this curve right here is just right. You know, that would not decrease your grade that you didn't follow that line. Plenty of lines to do. If it all comes together and looks pretty good, it's pretty good. If I get a sense that you didn't try enough, and I've been teaching these classes for years, so I can see effort in people's work. But even here, just going with the basic line on the mouse without pressure sensitivity, you can get a cool result. Let's try this for a little while. Use the plain old brush tool. I'll introduce the other tools a little bit later. I'm going to give you a moment to just draw a little bit with this technique, brush tool, either the mouse or the pen. Just trace any of those drawings for a moment. Save your work every once in a while. Control S. Work on that for a bit. And then I'll show you other drawing techniques in a moment. So just trace.
So here's, uh, as you're working, here's a trick. Like, let's say with this character, I've got this hair. And instead of going in, let's say like this, if I just do the outline of the hair, something like that, then, okay, paint bucket, fill it in, the end. Let the computer do it for me. So consider that instead of filling it all in as manually like that, just make the outline of the shape, make sure the shapes close, and then um, with the paint bucket, fill in the fill in that part. So that might be a time saver. Like let's say here on the lips as well. So what I would do is I'd go around the outline of the lip, the highlights, paint bucket, fill in for you. Computer is supposed to make life easy. You go around the outlines of the Every once in a while, also, you can draw a little bit, then switch to the selection tool, select either the shape itself, click on the edge. Remember, you can smoothen these lines. You can straighten these lines. Maybe that'll give you some results. Maybe you can go in and push and pull the edges. The point of this activity at the moment is just kind of getting used to the tool in its various nuances. In my case right here, personally, I really like what it did for me right here. I would smooth this out. Well, like, I really like these little curves and detail that I just kept smoothing a couple of times and it took my drawing and I knew that. I didn't draw that myself and kind of smoothed and did it for me. I went in and made the cheek a little smoother in my case, but I started at a certain point and then let the machine do what it's good at. The I know a lot of us are very used to, I want to draw the complete line, but it's perfectly fine to do it in chunks. I decide this is all on the mouse. Do this little line here to here, and do a line from here. You often do a lot better in little, little pieces of a line. Don't beat yourself up trying to do one complete line for the whole curve of the hair. Do it in pieces just to kind of get a different, see that? Just to get a, a different sort of uh, feel for how it works. Okay, so let me show something here. Um, I'm drawing with the mouse. I'm trying to draw this line of the hair. So I'll look at my hair. Whoops, my hand went off. I'm not going to undo that and do it over. I'm going to move forward and show you something, something interesting here. I'm going to leave that line all wrong there, and I'm going to draw the next line over here. But watch this. I'm going to start the line over here and then continue it here. All right, so what matters here is ultimately there's gonna be this curve of the head, but I'm making it by making a line this way. Okay, 
And on that part there, well, it's just a matter of removing this extra part and this extra part here. Yes, I could go back and make it perfectly one long line and that might work. But watch this, with the, with the move tool, this is so weird and interesting. Again, this is vector drawing. Um, I can grab this edge over here and drag it and pull it. And once an edge overlaps, right, there's an edge here. And if I overlap it with the opposite edge, it kind of erases itself. And this part over here, I can grab this edge and kind of pull it over here. It erases itself. Grab this corner here, it erases itself. Click that piece, delete on the keyboard. Click that, delete on the keyboard. Click delete. Maybe it's a lot of effort, but I'm just trying to show you here. This is an incredibly malleable drawing tool. It's very shapeable. Don't rely on, I've got to make the perfect curve all the way. Undo, try again, try again, try again. Maybe that technique will work. Maybe you're speedy enough with it. That's fine. I'm just showing different perspectives where I started to draw the curve, then drew the curve again. And as long as they overlap, the point is that when lines overlap, they kind of behave in an interesting way because then now I can pull this little corner so that it kind of overlaps here. Now that is a separate piece that I can just delete off the keyboard this, pull it out over here, it deletes itself. Make a selection with the lasso tool and hit that with smoothen. Notice I'm turning on and off my tracing layer sometimes, even if I'm using an obvious color. Sometimes it does help to remove it or hide the tracing layer temporarily. You have practice, you might be able to do pretty good with just the mouse. It might be horrible. And then with the tablet, it might be very nice or with the tablet, it might not be as nice. So everyone's gonna do it their own way. So I've drawn that part over there. I'm not gonna waste my time filling it in by hand. This is not the real world, this is it. Gonna drop the color in with the paint bucket. Uh, it's not filling in. I knew I drew it right, but it's not filling in. This is the part where you might see where it's just off by two pixels. There, the whole else part of the head doesn't fill in with the paint bucket. That's why turning on and off your tracing layer once in a while lets you see the, um, the parts that are missing. So I could go with the paintbrush and draw it in, or with the select tool, just grab that edge, make it touch the other color connected. Fill it in. See that? When there was a gap, obviously it's not going to fill in, there's a gap. Is a time saver, maybe. Select tool. Keyboard shortcut. If you hold down the control key, you get the select tool temporarily. Drag that piece to make that piece touch. Connected. Fill it in.
And what was happening was the tracing, you had it on the top. You want your drawing on it. And maybe you get this version and it's okay and you do it again and it'll be okay again.
All right, so let me make a little note here. I'm going to do the eyes. So obviously in the original drawing, you see all of the brush strokes of the original artist. That's the original. Again, I'm not going to be grading and that you get every line, but I am grading that you do effort. So in my version, there's my version. Now, filling in the color, it's my version. I'm not going to put in all three of those eyelashes. I'm not going to grade you on putting three eyelashes. I'm grading you on doing the whole work and getting practice. That would be acceptable, and I would not beat myself up for making every single eyelash. Question. No, for the homework assignment, you can choose multiple line colors, line sizes. No, this is work for inside of practice. So you could then do multiple lines and sizes and colors, filling in colors as well. It's pretty open-ended, yeah. So here, what I was saying about the, uh, the detail of things, um, you could go in and fill in every eyelash. The original drawing has three eyelashes right there, but I'm not, but I'm not saying cut corners. I'm just saying work smarter. We don't have to do every single tracing, especially some of the more complicated drawings. It's more about getting a sense of how it all works. So control A on the keyboard to select all. All the lines. All the lines. Now we're changing.
So part of the assignment will be to color the, um, the drawings. And in my particular drawing, the original doesn't have completed lines. Remember when you want to drop in colors, let's say I finish my work and I want to make a green shirt. Well, only some parts of the drawing have the complete line and definitely on mine at the end, it just trails off. The original artist didn't finish it off. So you will have to judiciously, depending on your drawing, complete it in a way that you are able to fill in color, just to be very obvious. I'm going that. Um, obviously in the original, the drawing doesn't complete up to here. If you have but if you're doing as well the assignment, but you want to have some bit of color, make sure the line is complete. So in my case here, just to show the example, I am able to fill in a color here, but then I, it doesn't fill in over here. So again, get used to turning off layers, turning on layers. Um, there's a lot of visual stuff that can overwhelm you. So you want to turn off layers you're not working with. I'm trying to fill in the color. It's not letting me. Everything looks complete. Well, you might need to zoom in on where the corners of things are. And if there is, oh, there we go, three pixels right there that are not connected are causing the whole thing not to fill in with colors. When I'm zoomed out like this, yeah, the drawing is complete. Why doesn't it let me fill in the color? Well, there is three pixels right here that are not connected. So easy way to connect it, select tool, go to the edge of that line, drag it and connect it with the part that is, that is, that is the other piece. Once they overlap, they then become one line. And now when I fill in the color, it fills in the color. As you're drawing, you also want to be aware um, Adobe Animate considers colors very, very importantly. This shade of blue is a very specific shade of blue. If I change the shade even by like 1%, it's a different color. So I think that I'm drawing a completed line and such, but this blue is, you know, 1.0 and this blue is 1.2. If it's not the exact same exact blue color, it's not going to see it as, as a cohesive thing. So to make sure it's the exact color you've been working with, that's why you've got the little eyedropper here. You can select eyedropper, eye for eyedropper, click on a color, and that'll grab the exact color you were working with. And notice that with a couple of people that it looked like it's not detecting that it's one cohesive thing because the color is slightly different. The eyedropper, get used to the eyedropper to select the exact color. So let me pause here. Let's have everyone pay attention to this for one quick moment. You can back to your drawings in a moment. But let's say I've got this where, um, okay, I'm just filling in colors. I've got a cool highlight in the hair. I want that to be white. 
but there is these gaps here, obviously, that are that the color spills in. So you draw the color here and it just spills in everywhere, right? But I want all of this to be white and this to be flesh tone. Yeah, I, I've said that if you as long as you connect the shape, then it's a shape. I don't want to make that connect with that. I don't want to do that and that there. So here's something kind of advanced. Adobe Animate considers everything shapes and based on the color of the thing. So I, I don't want to close this shape here. Okay, I close the shape and then now fill it in white. And that's white. Okay, cool. I don't want that. Maybe I want that. Depends what you're trying to do artistically. Here's what you could do. Um, you could draw with the other color that you want to be the separator, right? This skin tone leaked into the hair, but in between, what if I draw the other color here? So there's a color and then another color and then another color. Adobe is seeing that as three separate islands of color. So now when I get the paint bucket, fill it in with color, that's its own island of color there. And I have the effect that it's not connected. I didn't want the blue to connect with the blue. I'm going to be black better. But the point is, wherever you have a color and another color, Adobe sees it as different items of color, different shapes, different objects, and you can mingle with them in different ways. Let me go back and show that again, maybe a little bit more refined. All that I'm trying to do is I want these little streaks to be the, the white highlight. A brush tool, a small brush. I can even go down to like a tiny one pixel brush. One pixel is enough there. Right there, paint bucket, fill that color, 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 oops, color. And yeah, if I go in there, okay, I'm, I'm seven pixels wrong. Let me fix those seven pixels. No, we're going to be looking at it like that. I don't see seven pixels. This is the, the, the part of our perfectionism. I know I have that. I know a lot of you have that perfectionism. When you have deadlines and such, you want to taper that perfectionism a bit. Because yeah, I know that there's seven pixels wrong here. I can see them if I zoom in 1,600%. Don't zoom in 1,600% and worry about it. Yes. Yeah, if you still want to fix that, it's going to be about using your select tool to push and pull or maybe, you know, select and smoothen. It's going to be about just manipulating it and you will see, you will be able to do it, but that's the part where that's the part where am I going to stress on it that much? At 1600%, I see it, but at 100% normal here, no one's going to see it. You, you might remember it's there, but no one's going to see it. Yeah, everything could still be edited completely down. Let me take it back one more time. Yeah. So... Yeah, I can still go in and fix it. Select it one time to smoothen it a little. Press escape to deselect. And then just push and pull this. The bucket. Finger ready on the undo just in case it didn't do it right. and then save every once in a while. So this is about 2.10. Um, so the, um, this that I was showing here was to get yourself set up with the project um, practice in class. And for homework, this is not due until Sunday. Now, practice makes perfect, or practice makes, what's the other way to say? Practice makes 
not perfect, but what's the other one? Perfect. No, no, there's not a perfect. Um, Alex said it in another class. Practice makes practice makes better. Let's just say better. Practice makes better. Perfect eventually. Practice makes better. Now, saying that, why not do this? You know, why not get to a certain point now? And you might think, oh, turn it in. Why not do it again? Why not practice it again? Yes, I've got other things to do in life. Yeah, I, I want to go watch Netflix. Yeah, I want to do other things. Sure. But again, I've taught this class for years. And the people that practice and practice and practice turn in work that shows they did a lot of extra effort. And there's a lot going on in the world. It's perfectly fine. But I'm just telling you, the more you practice, practice makes progress. That's what I meant. Yes, thank you for that <laughs> in the chat. Practice makes progress. You are making more progress as you practice. And eventually you get to that perfect part. So maybe you get to the point at the end of today that, yeah, I'm going to turn this in. Okay, you did the minimal baseline. Cool, you got an A, sure. But what do grades matter in the world if you didn't practice and feel comfortable enough? Question. Oh, I, I can't have them leave school property. That's why we've got them in the lab times. To work. The last one is going to be tomorrow. Today, um, definitely Wednesday. Today, I've got to double check my schedule. We might have a little lab time today, but definitely Wednesdays will be about an hour or so, depending how much people want. Wednesdays, 2.30 to 3.30. And Mondays, maybe, because I've also got a class after this class. It's a different class. What class is it? It's a web design, web design level two. Mm. So for the moment, looking at our time, if people want to keep working until 2.30, that's fine. If people want to kind of wind down and head home, that's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lock the door and have you stay here until 2.29. If you want to leave at a certain point, we're grown ups. it's college. If you want to keep working, great. If you want to start turning in your items, that's great. We'll do that. But um, practice this on Wednesday. I've got more drawing techniques to show more concepts and such. There's many ways to draw and such. This is just our first look at things. You might want to do version two on, uh, on, on Wednesday. I've still got more to talk about, though. So I'm going to end the recorder. Um, all of this that I've been recording, I'll put it on Canvas, of course. You can work as you wish. Call us for help. Wrap it up if you want. Catch the bus early or beat traffic, whatever. But that'll be it for the moment. And we'll be back on Wednesday and lab time.